Washington DC de Kotutini Akatatu to city na aya we yuak chi ekak to sane Tahasi ekei to asiku we saku so kuna chi sho hati ati kwantin katakakwanik ah kuna chi kakatlat we would like to thank the Smithsonian um when we went there, first of all, we'd like to thank the sharing our knowledge. Ha atusku wo ushtin kakaktu nik. We'd like to thank the Sharing Our Knowledge Conference for being able to be here to share these beautiful pictures from the Smithsonian um, Recovering Voices. Um, if we forget any of the luminaries, forgive us, Alice Taff, Peter Metcalf, and all the work that they've been doing throughout the years. I did go to the first Klan conference, I think it was in 1990 in Klukwan. If I'm mistaken, go ahead and say it. I kid. <laughs> and I went up there for the very first time, and it was magnificent. I got to listen to Austin Hammond, and I got to go to the whale house. And I got to see how the things were going back into the earth the proper way and going in there and then hearing the stories about their house posts. And, and it just felt like I was walking on the moon because I was getting back into my culture after having left it from eight years old. So I, it was really wonderful. And... Uh, I just would like to say gonna cheesh to sharing our knowledge conference. It, it's really a a great thing, you know, if you really think about what it's saying, sharing our knowledge. So we'll begin. Um, in the spring of 2017, like I said, there was a group of people, elders, and Kakatlat called me. And I'm not going to tell you the real reason I jumped on that boat, because there was another conference in Hawaii <laughs> that a lot of people went to. But we went, and I thought this was the most important thing. And the log jam master from Angoon, log jam house master from Angoon said, this was the most important thing. The recovering voice of the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian and the National Museum of Natural History Artifacts from the Collection Building Resource Center of the Smithsonian Institute Museum. I already said that. <coughs> and when we got there, it was in the spring, it was cold there in Washington. And we went right into, uh, first of all, we went in and we ate soap berries. <laughs> we ate soap berries from um, Angoon. They were wonderful. And we went to Eric Hollinger's house with his wife, Lauren. Are you guys out there? I can't see past my nose. Uh, and so one of the first things we were looking at, we'll go through this small slideshow before we get into what we're really talking about. The one thing that really, and there was so many things to choose from. We've probably got 600 slides here. I know that we can't look at them all. The one thing that was really interesting to me was Adawut Shadakoch angry hat, uh, the helmet. It was just interesting. I thought that this was beautiful, and she could tell you what it is. It's trade beads and Tlingit. It's a trade beaded tunic. Uh, uh. Uh. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's up? 
It's a dagger. I don't know why I'm looking at war stuff. <laughs> What's that? I thought that was really something. Um, they gave us a choice to choose 100 artifacts from our area. Nanya Ai, Nanya Ai Anshawas Nuk. Her, she and I are teaching together in Wrangell, and I said I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna go to this, and so she said go ahead, choose the artifacts, and. I went through, and this is one of the things I wanted to look at, and it was found found in the Tall Tan area. Well, it was found in Wrangell, actually, but it's Tall Tan, which is up the river. We're at the base of the mighty Stikine River, the fastest navigable river in North America. Stikine. 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 You want to say it? What's that? How do you say it? Uh, uh, and then this was a pattern board. Everything was so interesting to me. The pattern board they showed for the Nachain, and that was to uh, the opposite clan made the pattern of when the, they decided to make the blanket, and they used these for the weaving. And I, I was really amazed. Sheshuch rattle. Tlingit found in the Stikin area. And uh, inside of it were gizzards, gizzard stones from birds, grouse, uh, ducks, ducks, gah, sheshuch. Ah, keep this one in mind. Think about what you're seeing there. Tell me what you think that is. Go ahead. But what is the thing? It's a hat. A hat? Like, we thought it was a hat also. They were looking at it, and we, it, is it raven? Is it eagle? We couldn't know. And when we looked at the next, and it's labeled as a raven hat. And when we looked at the bottom, <gasps> they said, the yeah, elders. Where do you tie it on? That's not going to fit on your head. It's too shallow, they say. And we kept looking at it, and they said, it's a top to a woman's trunk, luggage. And it wasn't made out of alder. It was made out of cedar. And so, um, it, he, and Alan said, haven't you ever seen one of those? It's a trunk of cedar, and it's hollowed out and it's used for a cooking pot. So a woman, a woman would put her cooking stones in it and whatever she needed when she went to camp. So it was the top of a, of a woman's luggage. And I, I, I really like the hats here in this, um, the museum's collection. And so they were, the recovering voices with the elders is that they were kind of, um, not kind of, they were uh, correcting some of the things that were being shown there. And it gets more interesting. Dasaya, uh, what is this? It's a wood warm hair ornament. Somebody's beautiful hair was in there. During our stay there, they sang the woodworm song. And these artifacts, mind you, had not heard their language. They say these artifacts are spirits, they're our people, and they hadn't heard the language. You'd be surprised the songs that the elders sang to the artifacts at the last day. You'd think they were going to sing some great big ballad, but it was just beautiful songs they sang to the, to the artifacts. Um, a face only a mother could love. That's what the song was for this woodworm ornament. You could, when you entered the museum where all these things were stored, you could feel it. You could feel the, it was different going inside. You could feel our ancestors in there. And a slinky people believe that everything has a spirit. Even our trees, our water, everything that we walk on, everything that we use. So this was really something to to get that feeling. Okay.
Okay. Cook. Ah, we're getting into angry clothes. Anna, Adi. They say the story on this one was, we said, why is it got, uh, the neck looks like it's got, so our people, regalia wasn't always those Hudson Bay blankets. They were the skins and they were a fur and hides and this is an old vest. And make up your story. They said that the story was about um, somebody saw his wife go up the mountain with somebody else. That's what they said. <laughs> and the man who was helping me with the IT, he said, things never change. <laughs> so this is uh, a vest depicting a story. I thought it was interesting. Um, while we were there, remember, they, they said, what is that thing at the top? Can anyone tell me what they think that is up there? That's one thing they did not know what that was up there. Was it a bag? They couldn't figure it out. And the elders were looking at it and they said, that's a part of a blanket. So to that tunic, as I show you the next one, it fit right on the side like a blanket. So it had been cut during a party and given. I'm not sure how you say that when they cut pieces off and give parts of the life. Oh. A long time ago, our uh, people that were wealthy used to cut part of the nakin. Some of them used to cut a whole knocking up, depending on how wealthy they were. And uh, they used to give it out at the Kluigs. We did find one tunic and the pattern board that was used to do this tunic. And I'll tell, she'll tell you the little rings that are on the bottom of the tunic, what those are. I did write it down. Um, she said that those actually were um, the signature of the weaver, the way they did the little, the little rings on the bottom of the tunics, or if you see that on a Nachain blanket, also under here, it ha might have um, little uh, ties on there, and it's the signature of the weaver. It was very interesting in some of the weaving, Shken George was there, and she was looking at all of it, and you'll see more pictures of it. And she was saying that she could tell some of the, the wool that was from the, the goat, the goat wool, and some of it might have been bought from Montgomery Ward, and then some of it was dog wool, that they had raised dogs for their wool. Mm -hmm. And while we were there, there was a group there from British Columbia, although the lady said she had ties to wrangle, and they were um, getting information on their dogs and they were trying to, to, I guess, breed a dog that did that, that made that wool for these. Did you guys know that? That is so awesome to me. I thought this stuff was amazing, the things that I learned. This is a tunic, puffin beaks. I counted a hundred. And that's all I'll say about that. This blanket was found on the Stikine, actually in the Edelin Island across from my cabin. This was a Chilkat blanket. And everyone was really wondering about the face down in the bottom there. They were thinking, is that look like this or that? But it really wasn't, it, it just looks like that. It's like an optical illusion. It really isn't the face of a bird. And they were, they were wondering about that and that's not true. And the one thing like I was talking earlier about, oh, there we are, and our <laughs> illustrious crew. Uh, and we are in front of one of Chief Shakes' screens. And they said to ship it, they cut it in half to ship it. And it had been mistaken for years as a Deshi Ton screen. 
And then they found some pictures in a book where it was still in one piece in it. And when they lo really looked at it, they realized that those were bears. It's a bear scream from shakes. And I was in there and you see Alan Zuboff, Kanuck, Demert, Linda Wynn, who's here, Eric Hollinger, Chataya, Shirley Kendall, Shaksani Keek, Keith Kendall, and Kakatlat right there. And I brought in a bag of down, and they said to me, how did you get that in here? I said, it's in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> so we put it down there. So we were all standing there smiling real big. We weren't in the museum. We were in the resource centers. And in those resource centers, they're as big as a football stadium, and they're four stories high. So if you went into the bottom, you saw all your guys' totem poles lined up. I was like, whoa, there they have, it has to be that tall for those totem poles to be in there. I saw a lot of the old Sheikh's artifacts there. And they said, take these home. And then as my, my story is going to go on, I'm going to show you some more things here. I really was amazed with the hats. And so the first, well, we didn't show you that yet. But this is a ceremonial hat, and it's a mud shark. Uh, and it still has the waterfall on it, and the waterfall is doweled in. And the top there is, uh, is the fin. Could you imagine dancing with that on? I think I saw a picture in Shakes' house that had seven or eight of these around him when he was in state. In the Museum of Natural History, we're in the pod here, the smell is unbelievable. It's very, um, it's very noxious, my goodness. Uh, ask her about it. I, I had to go outside first to get enough to go in there. And they have three of these in there. And I was down there trying to look in the gill, and Eric said, not so close. That bright red paint is mercury-based. During the time of trading with the Chinese, they brought back that real bright red paint, and it's it's poisonous. And then you'll see some of the artifacts that have kind of a maroon color. It's iron oxide, not as poisonous as the mercury paint. But I really wanted to look in the gill so I could look inside the hat. It was pretty awesome to see those things. Do you want to say anything about that hat? Ceremonial hat. That plus so uh... Yeah, that, that one. Uh, cut, no, that's a cut, that one. Oh, what the? Uh, cut, go, shakes hat, ceremonial hat. Uh, the fin is a top fin there. Cut, cut, go, sock. Cut, go, sock. It was sock, yeah. The key, uh. Mm. It was big, really. It, it's a huge hat. <laughs> They're big. I'd say it was four feet long. It was huge, huge hat. David Boxley do has an You see there was great big hats on the Sim Sam people when they're dancing and that's how large that was. Big, big so hats. they were they were pretty big. It was interesting. To me, the interesting thing was uh, I knew our people were smart. That was always drummed into our heads that we were smart people. But it just amazed me at how smart and how intelligent they were when they didn't even go to school. You know, that was... Uh, Awesome thing that I notice. A lot of times, Klein will tell you that a lot of times I don't say anything. I just take it all in and take it all in. And then when I feel like um, it's needed, I'll say something. But uh, every, everybody, somebody, whenever you go to Washington, D.C., take the time to go see what we saw. It's truly amazing. And there's just not one building, there's... 16 museums. 
I was just, it was mind boggling to see how many things they have collected about Tlingit. Really interesting. We Cook. were, oh, excuse me. Cook. We were looking at the Tlingit overflow, is what it was called. Ah, uh, the overflow. Ah, uh, here it is. That's the one that I want to tell you. And this is called Dun 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 Adawut Shadakuk. It's a war helmet. And it's they think three hundred years old. It was spongy. And they're just gonna let him stay there. He's very old. It was very interesting to me the story that's gonna follow for this about this, not this exact one, but the story about it. Okay, Herman. And this is an at ladle. And they talked about, no one talked in the log jam house master say, no one talks about how good we were with throwing these. At ladle. And they don't ever say how good we were with bow and arrow. They don't talk about it. But these are beautiful. These are found in the Stikine area also. They have beautiful little abalone eyes. They're just gorgeous. The exquisite carving of these were just as phenomenal. At ladle. I don't know what how you would call it for throwing tuna. Soon, oh, missile tuna. Tlingit, tlingit, you do a shot. Tuna. Missile. Ay, okay. Ooh, I'm done. Okay, I'm going to go to something else for you. For your viewing pleasure. He said, just go up here and turn it off. It'll turn. And then go behind here. In here, you'll see us in one of the pods, and it's 2000, it's uh, March 14th. So I think we're in the National Museum of Natural History. And I'm going to play this for you so you can watch. And you see, of course, Kanak Demert, Linda Wynn, Dakloedi, Chut, Veronica, Eric. And there's that, where we learned about that uh, cover. And here we're going to go. You know, sometimes I've seen those dowels where they, they help to use the dowels to help support the weight of it from the yeah. collar, from the neck all the way up. So then, so if I recall correctly, the first written account by the Russians encountering the Klingit was they were with a group of Chugash, and they were um, attacked in the middle of the night by a group of Klingit, and they had never met the Klingit people before. And it was foggy and misty, and the Russian accounts say that there was this like a, Whoa! and they, and all of a sudden they looked up and people were thrusting daggers and spears as they were charging into the village, or into this encampment, and they were starting to kill the Chugash that they were with. And the Russians picked up their muskets and, and they fired, and they said there were these great tall beasts that were, that were attacking us, and would fire their muskets, and they bounced <laughs> off their heads, and they paused, and just for a minute, and, and then there was that commanding, and, and they just kept charging and thrusting stuff. So the first encounter between the Russians and the Klingit, the, Rush, the Klingit got shot at, and the Klingit were just like, hmm, that's interesting. These loud bang guns, and it's just like, all right, well, let's keep going. Didn't, didn't phase them a bit. And so from then on, the Russians and the, and the Klingit with the accounts, they were really formidable. And it was because they thought they were fighting these tall beasts because they had these helmets with these faces above them yeah. and they couldn't see the people at all because they were hidden behind the, the visors and the, and the faces that were of the animals and the creatures. How could they see from... They looked out through this, through this vent oh, right okay. here and you'll see on some of the visors that we have next door, there are little, sometimes there's little divots there mm -hmm. to make little eye holes where they can look right over the edge. So this protected all of the lower face except right at that oh, slit where the eyes were. Yeah. So that's where they were looking through. What are the numbers of those? The helmet is hmm? 111758. And the visor is 00140. It says it's 
hunting, fishing, slash war oh, warfare. Okay, I guess they're all grouped together in one category type. Alan, do you remember the thing that came for that? Don't hear it anymore. No. It's really old language. Yeah. And here you can see how the wood is curved so it could be steamed and bent. It's old technology. That's crazy. Man. Wow, you can see the grooves in there, yeah. where they are bent. It's yeah. carved, a bunch, of v, -groove, bent. A bunch of v grooves and then bent. What kind of wood? Probably, this one probably, I, it's not iron bar. Is it alder? Can't be alder, this one. It looks like alder. Alder is called Keshish. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Wally Frank is the only one that uses it now. Yeah. And more often now, the, young, the younger ones are all saying, you don't hear them saying they're going after Alder anymore. That's the, that case was upset. Going after yes. Casey. Right. So Good smoke comes to it. Yeah. <laughs> His neck collar is, was taken from Wrangell Island. His neck collar is Wrangell Island, collected 1-1-1904. 1904. Alan, would you be up for, for sitting so the camera can I like fit that. you? I got a good picture of the car for a second. I like that. I wanted to show you, oh, have we quit, quit hollering? <laughs> um, some of the the photos and I want to go into this one right here and you'll probably see people you know in these right here so while I was in here in those helmets I really and I want to go back a little bit I'm not sure how to do that to show you some of the pictures of those helmets in the waterfalls and we were in the Museum of Natural History here and I'm going backwards I'm sorry I'm making myself dizzy Oh, sorry. And that was the old frog helmet. And it just was so interesting to me to look at those things there. And up close, they're so beautiful. And these were, I guess it's wanting to advance on its own. So um, I'm going to go into, I'm in there. That might be easier, huh? So each time that we looked, and this one was most beautiful to me too, was that we were looking at the Chilkat blankets and, uh, and I'll advance with this one, the Nachain. And that's where we saw the signatures on the corner of the blankets of the Nachain. Um, I don't know what we thought that was. And during this time, the Chilkat blankets were taken out, and they, you will probably see this poster from the Smithsonian, and it's called Weaving with the Ancestors. And uh, she, Miss Shken, George, and Gabby will be in that poster, and we got to, we were up on the top watching that, and it was really beautiful if you ever see that we were there during the time that they were going to do this weaving with the ancestors and it was like around a, a pinwheel of um, our ancestors and we were still looking at things here and that, that was that camera crew that was doing that that's Judith they adopted or they gave her a name because she was a really good recorder I heard she left hmm. went to a different museum anyway just wanted you guys to to share with you some of these these beautiful pictures and all the things that are there. I want to get to my war helmets though. I I really like them. I my uh, uh, he, he 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 carved one 
with uh, Tommy Joseph, and uh, it, it's really something. He's real aggressive. He carved it really fast. Stop right here. Okay. I don't know if everyone knows, but uh, the Chilcat, the Chilcat weavers had someone paint the board for them, and it was in three sections, and that's what they weaved from. It, they always commissioned the opposite tribe to paint those boards for them. And uh, when you look at those boards, it's just phenomenal how they can catch every intricate part of the knocking into their weaving. And you can see some of the stuff that's going on outside here. But the, our ancestors were very, very beautiful weavers. Kunchish. They talked about who, where they got the first blanket from, and they said it was a Thlingit man got it from his wife, and the Thlingit ladies copied it. Can I talk about it? Uh huh. She'll talk. What the. The Tlingit women examined it and examined it and couldn't figure out how. How did they weave it? So what they did was they took they took one apart. They took the in apart and that's how they learned how to weave it. Now who would have the patience to do all that? Holy cows. Dolores. Yeah. <laughs> We should just let her advance this, however. We'll keep going. I don't want to make you guys any more dizzier than I am. But it was quite a photo shoot, and we were just up above. And there's Shken and Kanak Demert, and they're looking at all of these things. It was it was fun and me with my 3D camera for the school. And that was one thing too, the Smithsonian said that was the very first time that anybody had brought a 3D camera in so she could share it with her class. So Anshawa Snook was on the other end with the class on a Skype and I was there and then we were talking at, we were eight in the morning and they were noon, or they were eight in the morning and we were noon so we spent our, afternoons talking and the, the Smithsonian said never let a camera in here like that so that they could talk back and forth and so Shken was on talking to her people too and we had our computers in there sharing with the children and so the elders were also talking with Anshawa Snook during all of this stuff here so that was also pretty pretty cool about sharing our knowledge we were able to talk with the students that were in our classes about what we were looking at. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was very nice, and I'm so glad that we're giving this a little bit of a, of a show here, because it was just, it was really something. And you see those ladies out there weaving. They should come here and look at this stuff. And you know, um, when I was, first went in there and I was looking at the chill cat blankets. The, you know those tubes that you put your fishing rods in? They had those tubes and just like up there, rows and rows and rows and rows and rows down these bars of chill cat blankets. It's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. And one of the things where on a lot of these artifacts, there's Shaksani Keek and Keith, Kakatlat, Linda, I don't know who that is. But we were, they said that, you know, you could look at some of the dates on this. Do you want to poke this right here? Like that. Until you find a picture you like. That the dates that you find on this stuff, they didn't know, you know, circa. Well, oh, I bought a flash drive. I had to get it. <laughs> Well, I needed to know how much it cost. <laughs> and I got to look at Shakes's canoe, and that canoe had been out in the front of the yard for years. There was people there that said that 
they used to play in that canoe when they went there to the Smithsonian to visit. You could get in there and paddle around. Well, now they have it under wraps, and I got to look and got to get up on a ladder and take pictures and look inside and send the shots to Lou. But these are cut go hit, cut go aha paddles, and you and the log jam house, the log jam master house man said that the color of the of the sharks is if it's green it's fall time it's a fall time mud shark I didn't know that I, it was very interesting to listen to the elders talk about these things you know we see stuff we say oh that's a beautiful color I think I'll just use that color they, everything meant something it was all it's all very all very you know kosher the word what is this <laughs> and and then we looked at um, feast or dishes cooking pots these are cooking pots there and you could see where the the same rocks were boiled in there they were kind of in they could see the the places where the where they had their cooking rocks inside of them there's the atlatl yes we're in here talking about these things, all this stuff. Virginia? Yes? Um, I would like to add to you the technology was a big deal for the Smithsonian because um, not only the 3D, uh, there was a couple of people that were at their hotel room and we were able to connect with our iPad because we didn't want to miss the the viewing of all these artifacts. So we had that technology. Then there was one of the members there that was partially blind. She had this phenomenal reader. Yes. That was portable where she could put the textile under there and it magnified onto a screen. And she shared her knowledge, not, not so, as well as the weaving, but the kind of fabric that was used, the cotton fabric for the lining and everything, it was just phenomenal. And then Virginia was really good about sharing information to her class. I was just really impressed and talking in Tlingit for her classroom. It was just phenomenal to know that the Smithsonian is willing to do this, even as far as Alaska. And even those that I cannot travel to Washington, D.C., you can request to look at these artifacts and make those kinds of technology arrangements, provided you give some time. But um, to, to, for me to be with my aunt and my good friend Virginia, it was, it was just spiritual. I mean, it was just phenomenal. You could feel it when you entered into the room. You can feel the energy, you can feel our ancestors, and the, the odors from these cooking boxes in here, and sometimes when they open up a cabinet, you can smell the hooligan oil. <laughs> you know, and that's how things were preserved. That's how come we still see those beautiful things that what our people used, and it makes me, well, it's not a good thing to say that you're proud and bragging, but our people were very smart, very, very smart. And so I'm still learning about how to be a Shlinket woman. Gonna cheese, Dr. Lady Shaw. A long time ago, when Mom used to talk to me, she always said, and maybe that's the reason why we smelled the hooligan oil. My mom said that a long time ago. The men used to take their belongings and they would rub it inside. And that helped the wood. Now they use some other technology to do that. And then speaking about technology, I don't know if we're going to get to the bead of tunics. But uh, one thing that intrigued me, you know, 
I always associate bias tape with Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> no, got to go to Joanne Fabrics to buy that bias tape. But it was interesting that they had a piece that was way back to the 1800s mm -hmm. where they made their own bias tape. Yes. And they made it from the they made it from the lining of what they were going to use to how neat, huh? How beautiful that was. I really, I really enjoyed that part because I'm a, I'm a beater and I sew a lot. So that was very interesting. So that part is up now about the dates on the items. And I thought it was very interesting. Just bear with me. During the time that, you know, you could see this was collected from Wrangell in 1904, or this was collected from the James Swan collection. George Emmons or whoever, and they would have a date under Circa, and it was during the time that they were in the Navy. They didn't know how old these things were because they said that they had four docks in uh, British Columbia, and they would trade. The traders would get the stuff during when they were a gathering, gathering, and when they got to the docks, they'd trade amongst themselves. So some of these things that the Recovering Voices, the ladies of the museum, they wanted to get the correction if you knew what it was you were looking at or if you knew the date. And you know, when Schken was looking at some of these um, nachain, you could see that they had been taken off of grave houses because she says they were folded and nailed. You could see where they were hanging and they're really weathered on one portion and the rest looked good. And they also talked about the colors and what they used to dye the Chilkat wool. And they said it was really yellow because of why? The yellow. Oh, everybody know what shook is? <laughs> shook, that's what they used. They used uh, urine. And my mom used to say that the, the baby, the baby urine was better than all the all the rest. So can you imagine trying to catch that? <laughs> <laughs> trying to catch that early morning? <laughs> but that was their technology. That was their technology for getting the color that they wanted. And, and when we were looking at Kutia Tsu, we were looking at Kutia, and they had talked about they'd found a totem pole in Hawaii in Vincent Price's yard, and they returned it to Juno. That, um, yeah, and it belonged to who? Because they adopted him. <laughs> yeah, that's our totem pole. <laughs> we gave My, it to him. Um, there, there was a group here in Juno called the Mark's Trail Dancers, and uh, I'm, one of the, I'm one of the dancers. But my auntie, Jenny Marks, they brought Vincent Price and some other celebrity art collectors here to Juno. And we had the opportunity to meet Vincent Price. And he was just like his movie. I had to I had to take him around the old museum and all that time we were going around he was going, You kinda wanna hide away <laughs> hide away from him because he kept doing that. <laughs> But my Auntie Jenny adopted him, and uh, when she was trying to put a medallion on him, Auntie was so small, she kept on, she kept on going, and uh, he had to kneel down, even when, this is how big that man was. When he kneeled down, she was still level to him, putting the necklace on him. He was a big man, and I can't remember the name that she gave to him, but we did adopt him. <laughs> there you see him, um, uh, Eric was doing our class. I can see our kids there. He was uh, looking. That's Lou's classroom. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. So we were still in this pod looking there. You see the opercula shell there on some of those things and that stuff at Lattel that I was in love with, all that stuff. Oh, here they are. I did not know about these. 
They're very fierce. They're fierce helmets. Ana adi. Ana adi. Ah. Oh, I I couldn't I couldn't believe this one over here. I think from Sitka. They are just beautiful to me. Ah, uh, human hair. Nah. Oh, us again. Lou, uh, Florence is talking to Lou. <laughs> was, I was talking to the class. You were talking to the class and talking to Lou because we were going to look at those. It's a... Uh, The back of it right here, if you're looking here, that's where the waterfall would be. And it's doweled in back here where the waterfall is and there's the, the visor that it sets on top of. I'm not sure what they called the waterfall. I have it written down. I wrote everything down and sent it to Kanakasi. Hinkasi, ah, Hinkasi, ah, you Ah. That's right. Ah. Hikchanagat Kas. Rainbow Falls, that's what I call. In Wrangell, Rainbow. Ashyat. Kanatzak. I'm riding the Rainbow Falls on my bicycle. Here we are here. Eric is a real help. The best. He is a good duck lady, Linda. He is the best. A great, great helper. This is set up by him, and he was in the Natural Museum of American History, and I, I think he said that's not the one that he works in. <laughs> Look at these helmets. When you, when you see these helmets, it's just uh, mind-boggling to see that, the, that this is what the men used to wear. They're heavy heavy, put them on their head and then put that thing around their neck to protect them. But can you imagine them fighting, running with these things? And not only that, they had uh, daggers that were also very heavy. But um, a lot of weight that they carried when they went to war. And I said that the Tunics they wore were made out of iron bark and then tied together. They had iron bark tunics. Well, log jam master say so. A visor, and then you can see the drivet or divil or whatever you call that right there where the eyeballs were. That's where they were looking through, was through there. Drivet. <gasps> Who's that? We spent a day on these, looking at these helmets. And I, I really thought they were really something. And then these are just the, el just the elders talking about them. It was really interesting. And I wanted to share that with everybody. I didn't know about it. And we have all this information. These are just my personal pictures, but I have, um, in there more things that are just unbelievable amount. We were there for two weeks and um, looking, and these are Chief Shakes' paddles. And they were taken off the canoe. I think there was one or two that weren't his, but most of them were. And those doors, everything slides. All those doors are just in slots, and they just pull a door out, and there's stuff hanging on it. You pull out this, move walls, move around. Yes, you can. All these paddles that you see in the background, my mom told me that um, the paddles meant something, and uh, they were carved to... There were some cart for war and uh, things like that. So they're, they're, now we use them for ornaments or we dance with them. 
But back then, they, they really meant something to the people for protecting their homeland. When I was at that Kixadi party, I saw one of these, and I was looking at it. I thought that was just really something to, I don't know why the hats mean so much to me, but they do. I went there to witness. I use my eyeballs for the, the Wrangell people. That old frog is spongy right there. They're going to leave him there. He is really beautiful. Seems like I'm just going around in circles, huh? <laughs> Does. <laughs> yeah. Oh. See how they had the holes on top of the mm -hmm. head? Yeah. For, for them to breathe air. Mm -hmm. I like that one right there. That was kind of my favorite one. It's painted really brightly, but it's really cool. I like that one. The feast dishes. There was so much stuff to look at. It. I could. I did this for when I got back from the museum. Every single time you came into my office, I would play this for you. They were like, "Are we going to eat or dance or something?" <laughs> no, we're going to look at the Smithsonian items. This went on for about a month. <laughs> now I'm doing it again. Every one of them are precious. Every single Yahaya is just really precious to me. You know, I, I might have wrote it down and it could be. These were just my personal pictures. And the ones that the Smithsonian sent to me, oh, look at his arm. Mm -hmm. It is identified in the Smithsonian. So I wanted you guys to look at the ones that really meant a lot to me, even though I don't know what I'm really looking at, except for I know that they're helmets. And so I was taking pictures of them with, a cam with that camera was set somewhere taking a 3D picture. So if you have the right kind of camera, you can be walking along inside of there like you're really in there. That camera moves all over. It shows it all 360 degrees inside those pods. I didn't bring that. I just have the pic. These are the still pictures from it where they were handling them. We went into way more things than this. And so I'm going to pull out of here. I'll just keep it up. I'll just pull out of here. Let me see. I'll go into photos again. And go down in here. And then I'm going to show you the shakes. Well, that's with a picture of Shake's canoe, and we did get to see it. Do you guys want to look at it, the picture? Yes. Okay. Stop it and open. Maybe that's not it. So they were just showing out of a book, the canoe and these. We got to see the bears. The bears were just set in there in the canoe. This was in its, its heyday here. Now the, the bears are a teal, a light tealy color, and they're just set down on, on a platform, and the canoe is put away underneath the, a canvas. And they brought it out because we were there so that we could look at it. And it doesn't have any paint on it. And it's come apart in certain places, but it's, it's still there. And this was just in a book. 
I don't know. So there was a car on fire, and we had to take a look. At it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a car on fire, and we were noticing that the fire department didn't get there. What in the world did I do? <sighs> okay, so oh, here we are. I guess it's just not going to let me. No, I'm hitting the wrong thing. That's why. Get out of there. Go to photos. I want to go to the whole thing. All, all photos. Photo album. Um, so she kind of wanted to, to look at some beaded items if we have the time. Knock it off, you guys. Okay. Maybe we're at the end here because it's not wanting me to, to go up anymore. Yeah, it is. Oh, I, went, I got to see Dan Sullivan. They invited me over, so Kakatlat and I went over to see him at the Capitol. There was people protesting. There's, there's Kakatlat standing there, and there's a whole bunch of people over there protesting. <laughs> Thought you guys would like to see that. <laughs> I was like, what are they protesting about? But I don't know. They were, it was so electric there, you guys. It was in the air. You know, everything that they were talking about on TV was truly happening. I can't believe it. It was, it was really something. We'd sit there and gawk at it after they let us go home. Man, we were there. Something you'd see on TV. You know, you just watch it in your living room, but I had a hard time believing that we were actually there and that we were seeing things that you would see normally on TV. And to be walking through the uh, White House, that was something. <laughs> it was, they go, the president's down there. And um, our, our Senator Sullivan was the man who did the gavel. So he would say, I have to go now. We were in a little train with him, and he was riding us around on the train. And he goes, I have to go now. I have to go down there. He goes, he's down there. I said, could we look in? No. The windows were frosted, so we couldn't look in at where they went. It was pretty cool, though. They let us in there. They followed us around, but they let us in there. This was, a, as we're getting into this stuff here, she wants to look at beads. And these are octopus bags. This is pretty cool. These are Chinese coins on a vest. We thought that was awesome. And these were bags, octopus bags. And she kind of wants to look at those beads. Um, one of the things I wanted to say was that some of those, you know, not saying that they ran off with all our nachain. Um, Shken said that, and Florence Kakatlat said that there was always this one design called the diving whale. And it was pretty common. And it didn't belong to either side. So they would just make them and sell them. So that's why there's a lot of them in there. And there are a lot of diving whales. I think almost half of them were diving whales. And that was because they were selling them. They were always thinking tradesmen. <laughs> they were selling the diving whale. That's a copper, copper button in the, the, um, the eight-legged bag. There's a name for that. If it was four legs, it's a man's utility bag. If it's the eight legs, it's a true octopus bag. Stuff that, you know. Uh huh, knock greatly. Knock greatly. That's it's just like that. Oh, there's that beautiful little face on the at level. I'm crazy about the at level. <laughs> those are, what do you think those are? Soup. We'll have to tell you about that. So they brought soap berries to the museum. And I know it's, it's, we're at the end of this. And Shirley Kendall said, we can't serve the Smithsonian crew soap berries unless you have a song. Ruth looks at me and Florence and says, do you have a song? We said, uh, no. So we were down in Crystal City. We were underneath the city. And you walk down to the metro and we had to learn how to ride the, the trains to get, don't get off at Ronald Reagan. It was very cold and it's not the right stop. <laughs> oh God, it was cold. So um, we were sitting down there at Metro City and I said, well, there's a song that they call Wu Ching, work together. Wu Ching, Wu Ching, 
And she goes, okay, let's, okay, stop. And she goes, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, hey, yeah. Let's go eat soap berries. And so we had the Smithsonian people. She goes, you got to have a cup and a spoon. And they were tapping. They were beating those soap berries with an electric mixer. And then keep going up high when it gets high enough. And they were beating and beating. And we were dancing and dancing and drumming. And so a song was born there. And it was the soap berry song. Let us all go and eat soap berries. So a celebration, you see the J-O-M kids singing. Hey, yeah, and they're beating on cups. And then Ha'at, I don't see her here. Ha'at is the one that whips them with her arm. And she's whipping and looking at me like, they're here, stop singing. <laughs> so these are soap berry spoons. And I have come to the end of my beautiful presentation. And um, I didn't leave time for questions, but it's, it, I'm just showing you a little bit more of this. There's so many, so much pictures in here. And I know that Linda Wynn also did a um, presentation at the last clan conference. So I guess she has it on a thumb drive and we could look at it. Okay, bring it. No. Gunnachishtakat <laughs> Johan, you want to? Enjoy the rest of the conference. Good night, Chief.